Before we begin, I must discuss the series quickly. Persona 5 is the sixth entry in the Persona series, which began as a spin-off of the Shimagami Tensei series, beginning with Revelations Persona on the original PlayStation. Mainline Shin Megami Tensei games came to the west with the third entry in the main series titled Nocturne, and a flood of spin-offs to the series became well received in the west afterwards. Because of this, Persona 3 adopted the Shin Megami Tensei title in the localized release and carried on to Persona 4 as well. Persona 3 and 4 became huge successes here and performed better than the mainline series. So with Persona 5, Shin Megami Tensei was dropped from the naming convention in the series is seen as its own entity. Although the first three releases in the series are heavily influenced by the Shin Megami Tensei mechanics, Persona 3 began to shift away from them, keeping the demons from Shin Megami Tensei as personas and using the push-turn battle system that was introduced in Nocturne. The series became much more social and linear. You still have fusions, and with Persona 5 you also have negotiations as well, which is a major part of the Shin Megami Tensei series. But this is where similarities begin to end. The social aspect of the Persona games set it apart significantly and assists you in the battles you face by giving perks to the cast of characters. Persona also has a set cast of characters that each have their own unique personas sends the main protagonist who can recruit and swap personas. This is different from the Shin Megami Tensei series as demons in the Shin Megami Tensei games fight alongside you in most games as party members while the story is focused more narrowly on a single character and the choices you make with them. With that out of the way, let's give a short summary of the game's story. Persona 5 centers around the main protagonist, codenamed Joker, who is forced to leave his home to serve his probation for a crime that he did not commit. The game treats you as if you are a criminal from the very beginning, regardless of how clear it makes it that you did nothing wrong. Early on you run into other students who have also been pegged as bad apples unfairly. On your first day at Shujin Academy, you find yourself in a dreamlike castle along with Ryuji, a fellow student who is just as lost as you. You both are captured and thrown into a dungeon where it is apparent that a coach Kamoshida is held a king. Upon Kamoshida attempting to execute Ryuji, you are spoken to by a mysterious being, Arson. This being asked to be awakened in what pursues is a badass display of an undiscovered power. As you make your way out of this castle, you come across a fellow prisoner, Morgana, who seems to know an awful lot about what's going on. He assists you in escaping the castle. In the real world, you are fussed at for being late on your first day at school. You guys return to the metaverse the next day and meet up with Morgana to discover that the castle is the embodiment of Kamoshida's deepest desires. You look at his slaves and Ryuji has an awakening with his persona. In the real world, you begin to investigate, trying to get evidence to Kamoshida's abuse. No one will talk to you and it becomes clear that nothing can be done. A pissed off Morgana tracks you down in the school and demands you help him and offers a solution to the Kamoshida problem. But upon learning that it could cause him to have a mental shutdown and die, you have doubts about it. Meanwhile, a fellow classmate An is being pressured by Kamoshida into sleeping with him and you overhear a phone call she has where she turns him down. It turns out he was using On in return for hooting her best friend Shio on the starting lineup of the volleyball team. The next day during class, Shio jumps from the roof into the courtyard. At the Mishima comes clean about the abuse Kamashita has done and that he had called Shio to his office. That son of a bitch! You, Ryuji, and Mishima all confront Kamashita about it and he threatens expulsion from the academy. You decide to take up Magana on his offer and An is dragged into the metaverse while stalking you, wanting to help. She freaks out, you return her to the real world and she comes back on her own and gets kidnapped by King Kamashita. 
When you go to rescue her, she has her own awakening with a persona. Now you are tasked with taking the treasure from Kamashita's palace, in turn giving him a change of heart. That sets up the story, but is only the first few hours of the game. Persona 5 is a JRPG with social elements. The battle system is a flashy one updated from the earlier games in the series. You can melee attack with a weapon, shoot with a model gun, summon personas to use elemental attacks, use items, and defend. If you knock all enemies down by criticals or weaknesses, then you can perform an all-out attack which will deal a huge amount of damage and can even end the battle. You can also negotiate with the enemies when knocked down for items and money. But wait, there's more! You can also convince the shadows to join Joker as a persona to freely switch between during his turn. You can fuse personas together to create new personas as well. The social side of the game is very complex. As you meet people, you will gain confidants that you can hang out with in the real world to improve your relationships. As this improves, you gain helpful perks for the metaverse. You can work a job, play sports, and go to the gym to improve social stats and earn a little yen to buy items throughout the game. You can craft gear to assist you in palaces as well. You are limited by how many days you have left before a major event occurs from palace to palace. You can choose how to spend your days however you wish, and your choices may assist or hurt you depending on the choices you make. The music in the game is one of the biggest highlights. In fact, it is one of the biggest highlights in the entire series. The music in the game is done by series composer Shoji Meguru and is one of the absolute highlights of the entire game. The soundtrack contains many different styles and the use of vocals is done in a way that elevates the mood of the game throughout. There are multiple versions of each major track in the game and you will be mesmerized throughout. You will hear it in everyday life as you go about your day. Meguru is an absolute genius and a master composer. Persona 5 uses an anime style of graphics and even has fully animated cutscenes throughout the game. The polish is well done and directed by Shigenori Sojima. The flashy transitions and designs add to the game's appeal. Actions and emotions are conveyed excellently through their animations. The game ends up feeling like an excellent anime series as you play through it and by the end you will want more. Which is okay because with Persona 5 Royal coming next year, we will in fact have more story. Persona and Shin Megami Tensei itself is a fantastic series and Persona 5 evolves the series concepts to a point where you feel pure ecstasy all the way through. I don't usually do this but I am giving Persona 5 a perfect 10 out of 10 and suggesting that anyone who is a fan of Japanese animation or role playing games play this absolute masterpiece of a game. I also suggest people play 3 and 4 as well as 5 builds upon the established gameplay started on those games. I want to thank you all for watching and remember, stay nerdy.
Hello, and I hope everyone who's watching this enjoyed the video. I just want to remind everyone watching that I also have a Twitch page where I stream my favorite video games. And I also have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Also, feel free to join my Discord as well. Thank you all.